But first, as you know, President Trump largely lost the race because of the coronavirus. I mean, there are lots of different things you can point to, but you take away the coronavirus uh, and uh, you've now retained Donald Trump's biggest argument, which is that he, of course, resuscitated the economy from the sluggish recovery that we experienced under Barack Obama. I know that Obama argues that Donald Trump, quote, inherited a, a, a great economy. Actually, he inherited an economy where, as I said before, uh, the president presided over a recovery where there wasn't a single year where there was at least 3% GDP growth. It was the slowest recovery since we've had since 1949. Predictions were made by people like Paul Krugman, the celebrated New York Times economist, columnist, who said that after Trump gets elected and after we pursue his policies, there's going to be a, a depression, the, the stock market is going to crash, and of course the opposite happened. So uh, you take away Donald Trump's biggest argument – uh, uh, the economy, and he loses the election. Uh, you have people like Carl Bernstein, the, the uh, Woodward Bernstein team, part of it, formerly respected reporter. Now he's uh, clearly just an anti-Trump, a Republican-hating uh, partisan. He said that Donald Trump was, quote, uh, criminal, homicidally negligent, close quote, because of the way he handled the coronavirus. Now, you have a John Hop Johns Hopkins study they said COVID-19 had relatively no effect on total deaths in the U.S. A woman named Genevieve Brand, assistant program director of the Applied Economics Master's Degree Program at Johns Hopkins University, analyzed COVID on all deaths. You know what she found out? That there was, of course, a spike in deaths attributed to COVID-19 before the pandemic struck. But the numbers of people attributing, but the numbers of deaths attributed to things like heart disease went down. Her conclusion, a lot of people that in previous years would have, would have been categorized as having died from heart disease are now accused of having died of coronavirus. So she says those numbers cannot be trusted. And if the numbers were normal years, she said, COVID-19 would have really no statistically significant impact on U.S. deaths. Now, that, that uh, uh, piece came out. I talked about it on social media. I put it on Facebook. I put it on Twitter. Other people did as well. Then you know what happened? They retracted it. Johns Hopkins put out a statement. Quote, after the newsletter published this article... It was brought to our attention that our coverage of Genevieve's Brienne's presentation has been used to support dangerous inaccuracies that minimize the impact of the pandemic. We decided to retract the article to stop the spread of misinformation. Now, we're going to keep it on our website. It's available on a PDF, but we're taking it down. She's a... Assistant Director for Masters in Applied Economics at Hopkins. She's neither a medical professional nor a disease researcher. And she said herself, more research and data are needed to understand the effects of COVID. And for her to look at total deaths is to minimize the impact of COVID. Does not disprove the severity Quote, because of these inaccuracies and our failure to provide additional information about the effects of COVID-19, we decided to retract the article. Wow. So they threw this researcher under the bus because she's saying, okay, COVID-19 deaths obviously are up, but other deaths are down that in years past would have been attributed to other, other reasons. We think, therefore, that things are being attributed to COVID-19 that in other, other years wouldn't have been. So, therefore, we don't believe that the deaths are really that much higher because of COVID-19. Oh, my goodness. Now they've taken it back. It reminds me of that study that I referred to and Heather McDonald and others did where researchers show that the police, if anything, were more hesitant, more reluctant to pull the trigger against a black, su black suspect than a white suspect. And they retracted the study. Said, well, you know, it wasn't that we said anything that was inaccurate. It wasn't that we didn't say anything that was wrong. It's just that... Uh, the wrong people were using it to advance an agenda they don't like. This is called the corruption of science. I thought you guys cared about science. Now, I, I don't know whether or not this uh, a woman has been 
uh, ask whether or not she's okay with them uh, retracting her, her research, saying it was wrong. But my suspicion is you've just insulted a researcher who probably stands by her research. Has the media gone to her, stuck a mic in her face and said, hey, are you okay with this? In my opinion, the only reason they published that story in the first place is because they now feel that Joe Biden likely won the election, so therefore they can be far more reasonable. Before that, COVID's killing us all. Now it's, well, when you look at all deaths, it really isn't uh, that much of a, of a big increase. They took that back. The New York Times also recently published an article that questioned the science linking shutting down outdoor dining with a spike in coronavirus. They said there's no, there's no link. Would they have said that had they not thought Donald Trump lost the election? Of course not. Now, all of a sudden, the media is getting a lot less hysterical because they know the hysteria, the, the hysteria hurts Biden. And just like that, we're not hearing anything about systemic racism against uh, black people by the cops anymore. Just like that. Amazing. What happened? Just like that is gone. What happened to the systemic racism? Just like that. Poof. 888 971 SAGE. Pennsylvania up next. I'm Larry Yoda. Don't leave town.